Hi there, everyone, and welcome to Paper Wishes Weekly Webisodes. I'm Sarah Newman, and today I'm really excited to bring you fabulous supplies from our friends at Creative Expressions. We've got sliced circles dies in four really fun styles. We have three collage-inspired stamp sets, and we have five different colors of pearl opal polish. So today's techniques will include die cutting, of course, and we're also going to focus on stamping in combination with our opal polishes. So we have a lot to explore today, and I am really glad you're here. Come play with us. Let's start with the pearl opal polish colors. Now, many of you have watched the earlier webisodes on opal polish, and you know that this is a water-based, fast-drying medium that you could apply directly to your surface. And it's actually got mica in it, which will give you a beautiful iridescent look when you apply it to cardstock. Now the color range we have today is blue pearl, copper pearl, green pearl, lilac pearl, and red pearl. And you're probably thinking, Sarah, they look exactly the same in the jar. And this is true, but this is where today's set of pearl opal polish is different from the other opal polish colors that we've looked at before. So I'm gonna move aside most of my opal polish colors here, all of those beautiful jars, and I'm going to work with the red, red pearl opal polish. And we can talk a little bit more about these. Now, as you can see, the opal polish comes in a handy little jar and it's got a built-in applicator little sponge applicator here. Now when you first get your opal polish, you're going to need to remove a little plastic tab here on the side of the jar, and then you can access that built-in sponge. Now our friends at Creative Expressions recommend that you prime your sponge before use by wetting it with a little warm soapy water and then you press out the excess water. They also suggest that in between uses, you mist the sponge with a little bit of water and you can also mist a few quick spritzes right into the pot, and that just keeps everything nice and fresh for in-between uses. Now, the Pearl Opal Polish has been developed to give a really subtle opalescent effect on white cardstock, and it just shows a hint of the mica color. On dark cardstock, the mica color really pops up, and this gives an amazing contrast. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to move aside these little bits here and grab a piece of just plain white smooth cardstock here. And what I can do is just dip my sponge right into that beautiful medium. I like to scrape off any excess right on the side of the jar and then simply apply it right onto my cardstock. Now, if you take a look at this, you can see that there's a really subtle opalescent effect on here. This is beautiful if you like to coordinate your um, matting papers, if you want to have something with a really nice pearlescent sheen on it, if you want to make your own pearlescent cardstock, this is a great way to do that right onto white cardstock. But let's grab a piece of black cardstock and see what this red pearl opal polish looks like when I apply it on here. So now take a look at this. That is that rich, beautiful, mica infused color, absolutely gorgeous. And that's all it takes to apply a really beautiful color onto your darker cardstock. So here it is on the black and here it is on the white, equally beautiful. Now let's take a look at a little swatch book that I have here and we can see all of the colors together. So here we have the blue pearl on black and also on white. Again, I'll tilt that around a little bit for you. Then we have the green pearl, which again, black and white. It's going to give you really two very beautiful, very different effects. We have the copper pearl, which gives a gorgeous antique effect on dark cardstock and a really subtle glow to white or cream cardstock. Then you have the lilac pearl, again on black and on white, and that beautiful shimmer. And then here's our red pearl once again on black and on white. Now with that red pearl, I have a couple of little swatches too because of course you've got black and white, you've got lots of colors in between. So here it is, red pearl on, um, this is just a hot pink cardstock that I've put that on too. So that looks really pretty. Here's the red on a brown cardstock. So you can see that gives a really pretty effect. This I really like, this is also red pearl, but it's on gray cardstock. So you can see that that gives you another different look. And here's the red pearl on um, a blue, kind of a textured cardstock. So 
There's black, there's white, and there's lots of other colors that you can combine your pearl car your pearl opal polish with to give lots of really beautiful effects. So now that you've seen how to use opal polish directly onto your cardstock, you can use it as a background or for die cutting. So let's take a look at the sliced circles dies that we're going to be working with today. I mentioned that we have four different styles of sliced circles die sets, and here they are. So we've got best wishes. There's also happy birthday, there's thanks, and then there's also the bubbles collection. Now each one of these has three segments, as you can see here. You've got a half circle that will either have a sentiment or a large pattern, plus two smaller segments with pattern designs on here. Now you can mix and match these in all different kinds of ways, and you can mix and match them in between the styles as well. But let's take a look at the basic technique. So I'm gonna bring in my base piece here, and this is a large circle that you're gonna start with. It's about four inches in diameter. Then you have a silhouette of a half circle, and you can pop that down and it just nests right inside. It gives you a little bit of a border around the edge. Then you'll also have the two smaller segments. And again, you'll have a, um, a silhouette piece on there. Then you can start doing your layering with the detail. Now here I'm gonna put down the best wishes. You can see how beautiful that is. Really intricate uh, die on there. And then here's one of the patterns. And of course that just nests right on top. And here is the other pattern in this same set. So it makes a really nice card focal, but of course you can do some mixing and matching and even some fussy cutting on here. And I've just trimmed off the sentiment from a different color of cardstock. So of course you can layer things up like so. Now another way that you could put these to you, so I'll move aside my best wishes and bring in another one of the base pieces. And this one is from the Thanks collection. So I've got my Thanks, mounted up onto the red silhouette. I've done this with black. Now I've got two of the smaller pieces. So I've got a flower motif and also a swirl motif on here as well. So I could have this just exactly like it is. I could also, of course, remove the larger piece and then I could do a um, couple of different effects like so. So I could have um, opposite pieces on here. I could of course also just move aside these and put these two together and then bring back in that thanks and have a completely different look. And of course I could also die cut four of the flowers or four of the loopy swirls and create a completely unified piece that's going to have all of those. So as you can see, they make a really nice card focal. There's a, they're a nice size and there are lots and lots of possibilities here. Now I have one card that I want to show you. And with this one, I've used that happy birthday sliced circles die. So I've got a beautiful happy birthday. I've got the balloons and I've got the candles on here. And I have die cut this from a piece of black cardstock onto which I applied the green pearl opal polish. So you can see that's giving me that really pretty shine on there. Now you'll also notice I've got a border with some of the um, pearl opal polish. I've done copper onto black and then mounted it onto black. And then I've got another strip of the green pearl opal polish as a border here. Now my background paper is from the Seaside Revised pa Pattern Paper Collection. It is a beautiful collaged background. And I've also added some stamping on here with black ink and a little bit of pearl opal polish. And it gives a really pretty subtle effect. I think you can see the shine, especially here as I'm tilting this. It's very subtle but gives a really beautiful effect. And I want to share that technique with you. So let me grab my Misty stamp positioner and let's take a look at how you can combine your pearl opal polishes with stamping. I'm starting with a piece of pattern paper secured in place on my Misty, And I'm going to grab some stamps to demonstrate with. 
Now I'm working with the Postal Mix Collection and for the card project I just showed you, I use lots of the smaller elements, but for the purpose of this demo, I want to show you something a little bit bolder. I think it stands out a bit better on camera. So I'm just going to take this leaf element here that you can see here. It's a beautiful kind of distressed uh, vintage botanical image and I'm gonna pop this down here. I'll nest up my magnets really close to that stamp element there so that I make sure it's nicely secured in place. And mm -hmm. then, as I'm sure you've seen it demonstrated with the MISTI before, all you need to do is close up that front panel and your stamp will stick to the acrylic plate. And then what I'm going to do is ink up my stamp with some black ink and then I'm going to overstamp it with that opal polish. So the black ink I'm using is the Finesse Waterproof Ink from Spectrum Noir, and I'm just going to ink up my stamp really thoroughly with this black ink pad, and then close up my Misty. Make sure and press this firmly, and make sure to transfer that ink, and then just lift this off, and I've got a beautiful stamped motif. Now what I want to make sure to do is clean off that black ink from my stamp before I do round two of this. So I just used a little bit of water and a rag. You can also, of course, use a baby wipe, whatever you happen to have on hand. And then what I'm going to do is get my copper pearl opal polish. And this is where that sponge really comes in handy because this is going to be my applicator. So I'm gonna have out my jar here and just dip that sponge right into the medium. I wanna make sure to scrape off any excess. I don't want to have too much going around the edges of that sponge. And then I'm going to ink up, as it were, my um, stamp using my opal polish. Now, I don't want to cover the image completely. I want to have kind of a random collage effect to go along with the collage of the stamp itself. So I'm just dabbing this on, kind of using an edge of that uh, sponge. So I've got a bit of gold on here, that copper on there, excuse me. And then I can just close up my stamp positioner again and lift this off. Now when I do this and I move aside my magnets, I think you can see not only do I have that black on there, but I also have the shimmer and shine of that beautiful pearl opal polish. Now. Keep in mind too that this is going to show up better on dark backgrounds, which is why I chose this darker pattern paper. So go with a, a brown or a darker color, navy blue would be pretty as well. Something where the black ink will show up, but also that um, opal polish will as well. This will just take a second to dry and then I can use it on my card. Now for cleanup, what you want to do, of course, is clean off that opal polish from your stamp pretty quickly. So again, I just mist that with a little bit of water and then come back with a cloth and clean that off in between sessions. Then when I'm done stamping for the day, I'll just run this under some um, warm water and use a little bit of dishwashing soap and it's ready to be put back in the packaging and used again for the next time. Okay, so now we've seen a basic over stamping technique. Let's take a look at stamping uh, a finer detail image with pearl opal polish. The first thing I discovered was that stamping with opal polish was much more effective when I chose designs that had some finer detail to them. So from this collage uh, postal mix collection that we were just playing with, some of these elements like this beautiful butterfly collage motif has some really fine lines on there and I did not expect it to stamp as well. In fact, I thought that the finer the line, the blobbier the results would be. So I was pleasantly surprised to find out that stamping really fine detail, like this little postmark, this turned out so perfectly. Now, another stamp that turned out perfectly was this beautiful hummingbird, which has some very, very fine lines on it. So let's take a look at stamping with our pearl opal polish using this as our example. So I'm going to bring back in my Misty. I've got some black cardstock in place and I'll just pull off my hummingbird from the liner sheet and pop this right down in place like so. So I've got my magnet securing my cardstock down and once again, just close this up and that stamp will be secured on the opposite side. 
Now for this one, I think I'll use the Lilac Pearl Opal Polish. So same process as before. I'm just going to dip that sponge applicator into that beautiful opal polish. Make sure that I don't have excess going around the sides of that sponge. So just scrape off any excess. And then rather than stamping just partial areas like we did before, I'm gonna stamp up the entire piece. So just using that sponge as my applicator, just tap this on. And I want to make sure, of course, that I've got uh, all of the areas covered on here. It's quite a large stamp, so I may need to go around a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And then just simply press this down. Make sure that I've got all my areas covered and then lift off and you can see how beautiful that has stamped. Now if I want to go back and add a little bit more color in some of the areas where it didn't quite go, this is the beauty of the Misty, I can just pick up that sponge and have another go because everything's still in place. Make sure and get that area there. And there we go. So now take a look. This is absolutely beautiful. And as I'm tilting it, I think you can see the shine of that beautiful um, pearl and the mica in there. So this is it on black cardstock. And that again is using the lilac. But let me move aside my Misty very carefully and bring in a card project that I've done. Now, obviously this is using the green opal polish stamped uh, right onto black cardstock and it just creates such a beautiful focal element on here. Now I'm also using the Seaside Revised pattern paper as my background on here. I created the corner that you see down here using blue pearl opal polish on black cardstock and that's been die cut with the bubbles sliced circle set. So you can use just a corner treatment on here if you want to. Now, I also use the innies from this uh, dot or bubble design to accent my stamped hummingbird on here. So you can use the innies on there as well. Then I've added just a little bit of a ribbon going along the side and I have a subtle and shimmery card design with a really striking stamped focal. So you might be wondering if you can stamp onto a background that has been colored with opal polish. Well, you can, and it creates really gorgeous effects. So let's take a look. I've got a piece of black cardstock here that I've colored with the Lilac Pearl Opal Polish. Just let that dry, and it doesn't take very long at all, and you're ready to stamp on it. So I'm going to stamp using this script design from the Postal Mix Collection, and I've got this already set here on my Misty. And again, I'm going to be sta uh, stamping this with the Finesse Waterproof Dye Ink. So I'll just ink this up as usual and then close up my Misty. Make sure to press that really firmly in place and lift and I have a beautiful design. Now again, just need to let that ink dry. It won't take very long at all. And then I have a beautiful piece that I can use in my cards right away. So it won't smear, you don't need to set it with any fixative or anything. It is ready to use straight away. Now here's another stamped image that I did. Now this was also using the black ink and that's on a blue pearl background. And it almost looks like the ink has taken on a blue tone rather than dark black. So I thought that was really interesting and created a beautiful kind of monochromatic effect. Now I haven't used all of the inks in my stash with the opal polish, but I thought I would experiment a little bit with the Harmony Water Reactive dye ink to see how that would work. And I was curious about it because this is, unlike the Finesse, this is a waterproof ink and this is meant for blending. So I thought, how would those two uh, react differently? So I've got a piece of uh, cardstock here that I've colored with the Lilac Pearl Opal Polish. And I've got that little postage mark here on my block. And I'm just going to ink this up and I'm using the Plum Jam ink and we'll see how this turns out. So I'll just stamp this right down here and it looks 
perfect and beautiful. Now, again, I'll just let this dry for a second or two, and then yeah, it looks like it is dry and there's no smearing. So that's also great to know. So have a play with your inks and give them a try. You may be surprised at how many of them work beautifully when they're stamped onto an opal polish background. Now, one more card that I wanted to share with you. This is one where I have used the vintage sunflower stamp design. So let me show you what that looks like um, from the package liner. So you can see it's an overall really beautiful sunflower motif. Got lots of little collage elements in here and it creates a really beautiful background. So I've stamped this using black ink onto a piece of cardstock that I colored with the copper pearl opal polish. And I used the thanks sliced circles for the focal as you can see here. And this is also copper pearl opal polish um, on black cardstock that I die cut. The corners are from the Best Wishes Sliced Circles dies. So don't forget you can mix and match in between those different sliced circles assortments and you can create some really fun mix and match effects. I also used a little bit of the Red Pearl Opal Polish just on my matting piece here to create a little bit of extra contrast. Some ribbon and some twine going around the bottom portion here and it adds a really nice effect onto this card. So I think you can see that there have been so many fun ways to combine your opal polish with stamps and dyes to create really beautiful effects. And I am sure that you're gonna be coming up with even more ideas as you have a play with your opal polish uh, collection. I'm so very glad that you joined me today and I can't wait to see what you come up with. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of the Paper Wishes family. We're really glad that you're here with us. Be sure to leave a comment because we also love to hear what you have to say. Each item can be purchased separately and you can see those all below. However, we've also bundled them into a creative money saver just for you. For that money saver, just see this video on paperwishes.com.